Hi everybody, as you see here, I'm going to talk about a cross section at the level of the brain stem, specifically the midbrain. So today I'm going to use this um, mid sagittal section of the head and neck, and I'm also going to use this drawing and this model as well. So first of all, I'm going to give you a big overview about the location and function of the midbrain. So if you look at closely to this mid sagittal section of the head and neck, at the top you can see the brain, and down here we have the brain stem. At the back of the brain stem, beneath the uh, occipital lobe of the brain, here we have the cerebellum. So brain stem is here, it is comprised of the midbrains, and in the middle of this area is the pons, and down here we have the medulla oblongata. So midbrain is here, this is the topmost part of the brain stem. And if you look at closely, just superior to the midbrain, here we have the diencephalon. Diencephalon comprised of the thalamus. This oval shape is thalamus, and this triangular shape is hypothalamus. So midbrain is between the diencephalon at the top and pons at the bottom. If you look at closely, at the center of the midbrain, there is a line. It's a space, it's called cerebral um, aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So, as you know, ventricles are producing and releasing CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. And so, this cerebral cerebral aqueduct connecting these ventricles, third and fourth ventricles together. And what's the function of the midbrain? So midbrain is really, really crucial because it acts like a highway, so some ascending and descending tracks going up and coming down. And it also houses the, some nuclei. So we have some nuclei related to the cranial nerve three and cranial nerve four. We have some weird nuclei like black red nucleus and also we have substantia nigra. So it has a lot of functions. It also uh, is re receives some information from eyes as a visual and auditory. So it's a small area but lots of small uh, structures packed into this small area. So. If you look at this drawing, this is a coronal section of the brain. Coronal section of the brain. Here is the right hemisphere, left hemisphere, and you can see uh, the, the lateral ventricles. And this is the third ventricle here. On either side of the third ventricle, we have thalamus, and you can see some basal nuclei. Down here, we have the brain stem. At the back of the brain stem, this blue represents the uh, right and left hemispheres of the cerebellum. And finally, down here, you can see the spinal cord. So here is the brain stem. Brain stem is comprised of uh, midbrain at the top. This bulge area is the pons, and down here we have the medulla oblongata. So midbrain is here, just above the pons and below the diencephalon. And you can also see this part, it's called cerebral aqueduct, which is connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So at the pons and open part of the open part of the medulla oblongata, we have this diamond-shaped fourth ventricle, which is closed up and continues up as the cerebral aqueduct, and it is connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take a cross section at the level of the caudal part of the um, caudal part of the midbrain, and this drawing is a cross section at the level of the spinal cord. If you take a cross section at the level of the spinal cord, you can see this butterfly shape uh, gray matter. There is central canal. This is the central canal at the center and gray matter is surrounded by the white matter. And this is the cross section of the 
uh, midbrain is drawing. Before taking a cross section at the level of the midbrain, I'm going to give you a, an, an overview about the external features of the midbrain on this model. This is the brain as model. If you watch my previous videos, you are familiarized with this model. Uh, if you look at the model from the anterior view, at the top we have the midbrain. This is the midbrain, this area. This bulge area from the anterior view and lateral view is the pons. And down here we have the middle lobe lingata. And yellow color represents the cranial nerves. So you can see this is the cranial nerve 2. And it's called optic nerve and then it makes optic chiasm, it's crossing each other, right and left optic nerves crossing each other's optic chiasm, and they make the optic uh, tract. So if you look at here, midbrain has two highways. It's called cerebral uh, peduncles. Ped, ped means foot, CLA at the end of the peduncle means a small. So it's a small foot, it acts like a small foot, the whole brain sitting on top of the brain stem through this uh, small foot. So this is the cerebral peduncle, right and left cerebral peduncle. So lots of descending fibers passing through the cerebral peduncles. Between these two cerebral peduncles, there is a space here, it's called interpeduncular fossa. Inter means between, it's between two cerebral peduncles. If you look at closely, you can see cranial nerve 3, right and left cranial nerve 3 oculomotors, they are coming out through this interpeduncular fossa. And you can also see cranial nerve 4, this is a cranial nerve 4, trochlear nerve. So trochlear nerve is the only cranial nerve which is coming from the dorsal surface of the brain stem, specifically midbrain, and then wrapping around the cerebral peduncles and going forward. So this is the trochlear nerve. If you look at closely to the posterior view of the midbrain, you can see two um, bumps. This is the superior colliculus. Down here we have inferior colliculus. Superior colliculus receives information uh, from the uh, eyes, it's related to the visual reflexes, and inferior colliculus receives information from inners, inner ears, which is related to the auditory reflexes. Now I'm going to take a cross section at the level of the caudal part of the midbrain, or specifically at the level of the inferior colliculus. This is the inferior, here is the superior colliculus. I'm going to take a cross section at the level of this inferior colliculus or caudal part of the midbrain. So if you look at the drawing, this is the midbrain, and I'm going to take a cross section at this level, caudal part. So if I take a cross section at this level, you can see this drawing. Uh, here is the anterior part, this is the posterior, so it looks like an inverted Mickey Mouse and the ears of the Mickey Mouse would be the cerebral uh, peduncle, so these two area, this area would be cerebral peduncles. So as I mentioned earlier on the brainstem model, cerebral peduncles acts like a, a highway and lots of descending fibers passing through. So you should, and you can also, you should ask yourself some questions. So the first question is that which space or spaces are within the midbrain? So what do you think? There is a space here I showed you, what is called, it is cerebral aqueduct, which is connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So at this level we have, at the center, here we have cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct is at the center, and it's connecting the third and fourth ventricle to each other. Just 
anterior to the cerebral aqueduct here and posterior to the CP, cerebral peduncle, this area is known as the tegmentum. Tegmentum. Tegmentum means floor. It's a Latin word, it means floor. At the back of this cerebral aqueduct, this area is known as the tectum. And again, tectum is a Latin word. It's, it's known as the, it's, it means roof. So here is the tectum. In the middle, we have tegmentum. And anteriorly, you can see cerebral aqueducts. So the second question is that descending fibers or tracts, which descending tracts passing through the uh, midbrain? So as I mentioned earlier, here we have cerebral peduncles. It houses the descending fibers. Specifically, we have corticospinal, corticopontine, and corticobulbar tracts. So all those tracts coming from cortex and going down to the spinal cord, it's called corticospinal. And this one is corticopontine, it ends up the pons. And corticobulbar or corticonuclear, it ends up the cranial nerve nuclei in the brain stem. So here we have lots of uh, descending fibers, they are coming from the cortex and they are related to the uh, motor information, they are carrying the motor information. Just between the cerebral peduncle and tegmentum, here we have an area, it's called the substantia nigra, substantia nigra. So, nigra means black. Under the microscope, it's black. It's black substance. That's, called, that's why it's called substantial nigra. It contains lots of neurons. In the cell body of the neuron, we have lots of dopamine. They are producing and releasing do dopamine. If they couldn't work and they couldn't release the dopamine, we will suffer from the Parkinson's disease. So, it's related to the Parkinson's disease.